over there right now, but I did too. All right. Good. Is everybody eating? All right. I apologize to the people who were here early that waited to eat. You guys were hungry. But I know, but you eat now, and you're good, and your belly full, so we are here. All right. Good. How you ladies doing? Good. Anybody married? You married? Is your husband here? Okay, husband is here. How long have I been married? Five years. Five years in a row? Yeah. <laughs> I have to ask because most of us are from the islands and we don't do in a row. We do on and off. You can ask another couple in here. How long y'all been together? Eight years on and off, like the first kid. In the but I still treat him like he's my son or whatever because I was away for a while. Yeah. So I'm impressed. I'm not married myself. I like to talk to married people because I'm getting to that point in life where I think it's time to do it. I think marriage is a great institution. Where else can a man go out and work and come home and give his check to somebody else and have them snatch his hopes and his dreams? Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want to borrow $20 of his own money to get a haircut? I want that. I'm tired of keeping my own money. That's why women have those big bags. That's what's in there. It's your money in your balls. It's not keys and lip gloss. Reach down there next to my husband's balls and get my keys. But I'm going to do it one day like my man. I want to do it. There's other people in here married who've been married for a long time. I just, I'm scared. I'm not afraid to admit it. Marriage is a big decision. You only want to do it once. And the problem is, I think men and women don't look at marriage the same way. When women talk about marriage, it's a happy occasion. I'm getting married, I got my ring, I got my colors picked out, I got four of my fat friends to stand next to me. It's going to be a beautiful day. You no, know, their dress is ugly, mine is pretty. But it's not the same for the men. When men talk about marriage with our friends, it sounds like something you get diagnosed with. Did you hear what happened to Charles? No, what? He's getting married. No! I just seen him last week. When did he find out? She told him yesterday at dinner. Is there anything that we could do for him? No, the invitations already went out. There's nothing we can do. Charles is terminal. All her cousins know. The problem is dating is expensive. We're not making as much money as we used to, and it's not. I don't want to make fun of homeless people. It's working people broke. You're working, you're paying bills, but you just can't get ahead a little bit. Like, you ever had to borrow $10 from your friend and make a deposit on your 10 so you can get your 20 from the ATM? <laughs> that type of bro. I don't know who told them to change the intervals at the ATM from 5s and 10s to 20s, but you don't know what's going on in my life. Why well, we got to start so high? 20 is a bit high. Sometimes you just want $8. You really don't need a whole 20. But the bad part is you don't want to go inside the bank and withdraw $10. Now the teller got the nerve to ask you, sir, do you need the balance with that? No, the bitch is zero. I don't need the balance with that. And why are you talking so loud? Don't you see the people in the line behind me? Who is your supervisor? I didn't come here for this. The problem is where do you go to meet a wife? The guys with girlfriends and wives, you're lucky. The rest of us, where do you go to meet a wife? Clubs and bars. I don't like going to clubs. Everybody in a nightclub is a liar. It's filled with single mothers and liars. And single mothers are doing a great job, but the world is crazy and you need to wait a while before you introduce the guys you're dating to your kids. I went out with this single mother two times. I'm at work. The school called me to come pick up her son. You can't put my name on the list to come pick up your son. I only seen this dude two times in the dark at your house. They wear uniforms now. They got the same little haircut. I might pick up the wrong kid. Now this dude is on my back seat wheezing. I don't need that. And I don't mind if you have kids. I just don't like bad kids. I don't like the people with the big five-year-olds dragging their feet in baby strollers all over park. If you can go from Pathmark to your car and your kid can get out of the stroller, help you break it down and put it in the back of the car, they don't need to be in no stroller. Right. I'm in the mall the other day, I seen a kid in a stroller reading. 
Right. And you know who I hate the most? You know the people with the three and the four year olds that can talk, but the mother let them use a pacifier? Yeah. I'm over this girl house two weeks ago. We sitting on the couch watching TV. Baby in the middle of the living room playing. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, the baby goes, you know I got a doctor's appointment tomorrow, right? <laughs> and I'm like, this is not a baby. This dude is making whole sentences. This ain't no baby. Everybody else in the nightclub is lying. The men are lying. The women are lying. You got older women in the club trying to look young, but you know they older because they got that vaccine mark on their arm. <laughs> Don't try and cover it up now. I'm just saying. You know, you know we're near 25 with that vaccine mark on their arm. I met one lady in the club, she had two vaccine marks in her arm. I was like, ma'am, I think you have polio. You just started walking. I just seen you take your braces off in the parking lot. I don't want you to do that. That vaccine is too new, man. It's rough. But I'm not going to give up. The older I get, I realize that you have to be open-minded. Nobody wants to die alone. So you have to be open-minded to date with people from different races, different religions, different age ranges. I used to date a Muslim girl. She came to me early in the relationship and said, would you consider becoming Muslim so we could get married? And I said, no, I'm Christian. I just want one wife and a girlfriend. Who wants four wives? <laughs> Nobody wants to come home from a night of drinking and be like, I was out with the fellas. 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 Nobody wants that. This stuff keeps me up at night. This is what I think about. If I get married and I afford it, you gotta buy a house. Women like heat and juice. I'm up at night watching TV. There's nothing on TV. I'm flipping through the channels. Infomercials and pharmaceutical company commercials. The pharmaceutical company commercials make you feel that you have what the guy in the commercial have. Till you hear the side effects. And you're like, I'll just keep what I have. You thought you had restless leg syndrome, but you don't want vaginal bleeding, oily discharge, vaginal bleeding, suicidal thoughts. Who wants that? I don't even want vaginal bleeding, and I don't know what oily discharge is. I didn't even know we could discharge oil, to be honest with you. Where do we discharge the oil from? Who wants to be on some new medicine how tennis balls on it and bust his ass right there in the eye? I don't want to see that. I don't even know if that's funny. But if I see that, I'm laughing. I'm laughing when I see that. So, me and the Muslim girl broke up, and I moved to Vegas from Atlanta for a while. I just had to get away. And I'm sitting in my apartment, and a friend of mine, you always have a friend who helps you through a breakup, and my friend says, you need to get back out there and give it another shot. And I'm like, no, I'm done. He said, no, give it another shot. I said, I'm done. No more dinners, no more movies, no more car parts. I'm not buying anything. And I'm like, I know I'm not the only person ever bought somebody car parts before. And I tell the story of, I used to date this girl that I knew I wasn't the only person she was seeing, but I didn't get her at the time. And one day she called me at the mechanic shop, it was a Jamaican mechanic, she said, I'm down here at the mechanic shop, and the mechanic says, I need front and back brakes, is there any way you could come down and help? And I said, yes, I could come down and help, but you need to call the other two dudes you sleep with too, and let's get them down here to help out with the bill. So I got the guy down there and I got him on the phone and I said, hey, I already put my car down on these front brakes. You need to come pay for these back brakes because we need to keep her safe while she drives between both our houses. Because you're just not going to take my brakes and stop at his house, you know. I'm fair, I'm not a fool, you know. So my buddy, in trying to cheer me up, he says, I know what you need. You need a big girl. You never dated a big girl. Big girls are fun. So I went and found a big girl, but nobody told me big girls eat your leftovers. <laughs> and I wasn't prepared for that. I don't have extra meals like that. I'm on a budget. All my meals are spoken for. And she would call me in the middle of the day and said, I left this morning quietly. I didn't want to make no noise and wake you. Yeah, but you took my lunch. <laughs> it's what you did. I was going to eat that spaghetti when I woke up. This isn't going to work, big girl. But I travel all around the U.S., I do comedy in Canada, all over the place, and I get to meet interesting people everywhere. And I met an older white lady on a flight, and she said, 
I want to come to Vegas and hang with the comedian. I said, come on, Tammy, you welcome. So Tammy flew herself to Vegas. We hanging out in my apartment. Tammy says, I want to smoke weed with you. I haven't smoked weed since my son was two years old. I said, Tammy, this ain't the weed when you was in high school. This is the weed that Jamaicans grow, Tammy. Their weed got in the names. She said, oh, it would be fun. So we rolled one up. We passed it back and forth. Tammy started coughing. She goes to the bathroom. I finish it off by myself. Three, four minutes later, I hear her calling me from the bathroom. Drew? 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 I said, what's the matter, Tammy? She said, I'm not feeling well. I said, what's wrong? She was like, my heart's beating fast, and I think I'm having a panic attack, and we should call an emergency. And I'm like, we're not calling nobody, Tammy. Don't nobody know you here. You a white lady in my apartment with me. That's possession with intent. We're not calling nobody. I watch a lot of forensic files. I know how to get rid of nobody, but we're not calling nobody. I said, you got two choices. You can lay down, and we can go for a walk. She said, well, I don't want to lay down. I said, put your shoes on. We're going to go for a walk. We're going to walk around this whole apartment complex so you feel better. I look on my bathroom counter. She got her insurance papers laid out with the out-of-network number circle. And I'm like, you have out-of-network insurance? I don't have regular insurance. I fly just to use the x-ray machine for an MRI. I'm like, tell me if you see anything. If you don't see no lumps, I'm boarding this plane. You can bring my results to 12 a That's where I'll be sick. It's rough out here. <laughs> I'm serious, DJ, I'm telling you. And then your car break down. I live in Atlanta on, on, in Stone Mountain. That's where all the Jamaicans live. And you take your car to a Jamaican mechanic. That is the best mechanic on the face of the earth because a Jamaican mechanic can diagnose any car by listening to it. He don't need no machine or hook it up to no computer. I love my mechanic. His name is Trevor. He works on Toyotas and Lexuses only. Camrys. Precedence, any of them cars, you bring it to him. You pull it up, you say, go out into it. I don't know, smoking is going hot, I don't know what's wrong. Put the wood. Start it. Turn it off. Start it again. Turn it off. I either this or that, either way it will cost you a brain. A whole brain trouble? You don't even know what's wrong with you. That's where I'm at in life now. My parents are getting old. Anybody got parents getting old on them? My parents are in the 70s. Seven in 1981. These people, VCR is still blinking on 12. And they call me for everything. I have to fix the printer, the computer. My father called me over the phone like I live in India. Fix the printer. Andrew, the printer won't print. Is it plugged in? Do you have ink? Is there paper in there? We have to go through this all the time. They're just getting old and senile there. Porters, they don't throw nothing away. I went over to the house the other day to fix the printer. I'm in the basement. My father had five old computers on the floor. I said, you need to get rid of all these old computers. He said, Andrew, I can't get rid of the computer that all my old emails are in there. <laughs> the emails are not in there. That's just the family I have. My family is not too smart. Me and my sister are the only ones that went to college. I have an aunt. My mother has three sisters. I have an aunt. She's the youngest. She's a dummy. About five years ago, my other aunt that lives out in Jersey was trying to buy a house. And we were all at Thanksgiving and my aunt said, I need to buy the house, but I need a thousand dollars earnest money. And my other aunt said, the only earnest me know live up Brooklyn and I don't pick him up a thousand dollars. And I was like, you are stupid. You are stupid. By any houses at all. And this is my family. My family, is, my father is old now. He's 75, old Jamaican man. He doesn't have any apps on his phone. He tells you everything. When Jamaican people get old, they have no filters. All the filters are gone. Whatever's going on, they tell you. I could call my father. How you doing today? Uh, I shit myself, but the doctor says, all right, I'm going to keep the talk. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't get it. I don't understand it, but that's my family. So that's what I do. I watch TV.
TV and try to figure out what's going on. You ever watch the infomercials? And you look at the information, you go, I don't need none of this stuff. But if you watch any of them for three or four minutes, you're like, what was that number? one 800 of glove I need all of that. Now I got this whole long list of stuff that I want. Up glove the CLR garden tool, shape weight. Who don't want a shape weight? You can sit there and watch TV and get one big arm. I want a shape weight. The easy cracker, my favorite is the Snuggie. You seen the Snuggie commercial? I love the Snuggie commercial because if you... Order right now, you get two, so I'll give the other one to you. It doesn't matter. You can use the other snuggy. I love the snuggy commercial. They have that old lady, she's laying in the couch, she's trying to reach the remote because she can't get it because her hands are cramping and she's stuck in the blanket. And I'm like, move the blanket. Who gets stuck in the blanket? But then they show in the snuggy. She got her hands behind her head and her legs are propped up. And I'm like, why would you not want to look like a royal group? Blue Grim Reaper. This Snuggie is awesome. It comes in animal print. You can have it for the dog. You can role play as a couple. You've been married five years. Wow. Okay. Pretty super. Pretty women take a long time to pick up the phone. The phone ring. Then they get you that break in between. You think she pick up? You're like, hello. Then the phone keep ringing. And when you pick up, when you pick up with an attitude, right? You be like, hello, who is this? You like this steadily. Remember you met me on five or nine like a month ago. And before I could finish what I'm saying, you like steadily. I'm busy right now. Call me back. Hang up the phone in my face. That's when I realized I'm the ugly one in the relationship. Because I go right back. Hello! I thought we got disconnected! No, you big ass. No, you think she fell out of go. Okay! I'm the ugly one in the relationship. And I used to smoke weed too, man. Anybody smoke? used to smoke weed in here? Grab it up if you smoke weed or used to smoke weed. He said, the Bob Big Bus and it's still small. Immigration down here, you can see it, you can see it. You see it still, but uh, I remember my first time smoking weed, I used to smoke weed. I sell weed now. <laughs> nah, but for real, I remember my first time smoking weed, my mother called me, she woke my butt. She was like, wow, wow. Why don't you ever, ever touch my stuff again? <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, mama. I never meant to hurt you. I used to smoke. And I had bad habits too when I first come to America. I used to go to like little corner stores to like little items like M&M's, Snicker bars, and little items like that. I remember one time I got caught, they go my mom's. Where's then the parents, Haitian parent? She was like, oh, oh. you see the Eminem's? So she started beating my mother in front of everybody. She was like, don't I tell you? <laughs> my mom came soon. When you go to the store, not to steal Eminem's. Cause when you're born there, that's how Haitians say, bro. Then when you're born, your sister go to the store. They don't steal M and M's. They steal rice, chicken, peas, so the whole family could eat. I'm like, I'm sorry, mama. You might get for now too. <laughs> I got two get for in here. <laughs> That's what's up. Do two more get out of here, man. <laughs> Ladies, let me tell you something. The next time you're out and about, let's say you're inside 509, and you got a guy in your ear trying to get your number, and you're not interested, you know what you should do, ladies? Stop scratching yourself. Ah, this has got to be for two weeks. Lick your finger. Ah, 
It's your strength. Ah. Where you going? You don't want my number anymore? 718. Strike yourself, I'll tell you, he'll leave you alone. You can't do that to every man, though. Not every man. You can't do that to every man. You'll find this one man, you start scratching yourself because you want him to leave you alone, and he start itching too because he want to be with you. <sighs> you said two weeks? <sighs> Mine said six months. <laughs> what we gonna do? We gonna see Dr. Siswan. <sighs> <laughs> he like, he turned around. <laughs> he like, yo, we now want to scratch himself. <laughs> I'm not going to take that. <laughs> That's just so good. One more, one more. Y'all been good, man. Clap it up. Oh my God. Clap it up for yourself, man. Clap it up for yourself. Right. Right. Let's go last day, right? Last, last week they told my car. Right? They charged me a thousand dollars to get my car out, right? And I don't know, there was a Jamaican man in there with me. On the way he did, they charged him 3000 But the Jamaican man in court started cursing at the judge. You don't do that, right? Jamaican man in court. Boom, the judge. I so much money for me to take me care of the shop. The judge was like, sir, no cursing in my courtroom. 5000 came with the Jamaican man. How are you? I so much money, judge. The judge was like, sir, no person in my courtroom. 7,000. Now the Jamaican man starts searching his pockets. The judge was like, sir, what are you looking for? Jamaican man was like, me, I'll make sure. Me have enough money in my pockets. So me go go tell you. Go oh, suck up your mother. <laughs> yeah, I have fun with you guys. Thank you so much. One more time for Stanley Dubois. Let's stand here one more time. He got the classic Haitian last name. Stanley the boys. <laughs> Stanley the boys. I know the right. boys. Stanley got the smallest suit I've ever seen in my life. I don't even know what size that is. That is nowhere in the 40s. That is a boy's call. Me and Stanley went out last night. We was in the club. The DJs always playing new music. Want to tell you who's in the building. Play new music. The DJ played this song last night. We hanging out. Shoot a big nigga, hit a little nigga. Shoot a big nigga, hit a little nigga. I said, Stanley, we gotta go. They're talking about us. We can't stay in this place, <laughs> We gotta get out of here. It's not safe. <laughs> in this club. Let's get in the car. Let's go. Stanley, that's my dude. He talking about the Jamaican dude in court. You don't know about the Jamaican dude, Stanley. You hate him. <laughs> Jamaicans are a different kind of people. <laughs> I know a Jamaican dude one time, he was out of work for a long time. It's been like six months he's been out of work. Wife trying to help him find a job. Been all over the place. Finally, he saw an ad at the zoo that the zoo was hiring. He went to the zoo, filled out the application. The guy said, look, I don't have much work right now, but the monkey escaped last week. If you could put on this monkey costume and act like a monkey for a while till we find the monkey, that would help us out. He said, you know what? I need the work. The Jamaican dude, first couple days, he didn't get the hang of it. By the end of the first week, he's swinging around, taking the bananas from the people, taking pictures. He got all kind of tricks. Now he's so good, he swung one day off into the lion den. The lion come around, climb on top of him and say, you see if you're meant to lose the little work? Three guys from the islands were hanging out. One guy was from Haiti, 
one guy was from Trinidad, one guy was from Jamaica. They were hungry. They came up with a plan. They said, we're going to go to this fancy restaurant and we're going to all eat and have a good meal. We're going to go in one by one. The Haitian dude went first. He ate a good meal. When the waiter brought the check, the Haitian dude said, I don't know why you're bringing me this check. You brought me the check already. I already paid. He started making noise. The manager came over and said, look, I don't want any trouble. Just go. Just leave. Come outside. He said, man, the restaurant nice. I ate everything in there. Trinidad guy said, me next. Trinidad guy go and he ate a big meal. The waiter brought him the bill. He said, the food wasn't good. I didn't like the service. He called the manager. The manager come over and he said, look, sir, I don't know what's going on. This is the second time this has happened today. You need to leave. He left. Go outside. He said, man, it worked. The meal was good. I had the potatoes and the lobster. The Jamaican guy said, my turn. The Jamaican guy go last. He eat big meal. The waiter bring him the check. He said, look, I didn't like the meal. I didn't like the service. Bring the manager. The manager came and said, look, sir, I don't know what's going on. This is the third time this has happened. I'm calling the police. The Jamaican guy said, I don't know what else happened for the day, but bring him a change.
go free, so I go free. Every month, every one back this. So he's a nigga somebody to fool with one of the stage I've been carried for. That's right. Thank you, man. Serving on top here. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I say good night, everybody. Good night. And let me tell you why I nice smile. I love comedy very much. And I love to see people like enjoy themselves. People must be happy. Stop being a bump, he's a good man, I talk about the AJ, really, you know? Bar, big bar. They have a problem with me, don't they? Just come here, you don't be able to sit there, you don't even know I'm on food, but I'm going to get the food, it's right. Then you can't turn them back. Then you have a restaurant, and if you go in and buy one food at $10, then you have to eat six times to go for your food. I don't know how to see what's going on. She said, I don't know how to see what's going on. So the thing said, this is what I want to eat. I want to go miss a miss. I want to go buy a piece of this fish. Sorry, you eat fish? That's fine. You eat fish? Yeah, we have fish, man. You eat fish? Yeah. I really rasta this man. Watch out. You eat fish? Lemon, the comedian. So if you go on YouTube or Facebook, whatever, on Instagram, Lemon, the comedian, blah, blah, the same one. But I don't pay him more pasta pasta. Which I pay a female named Mimi. And Mimi and Chocho? Yeah. I pay Mimi. I did a show named Crazy Langla, which I played Mr. Bates. I did one named Some Man Forget Bono. Some Man Forget Bono. <laughs> <laughs> what are you feeling like you're going to I'm not going to say to the boss. You know what's it? I never said show this that. What's the reason? Grab me out. Don't matter. Stop the show. Stop the show really. I don't know what I'm doing. Stop the show. Don't matter.
Et puis là, on t'a le coup. Mais il faut me saluer. Et nous allons dire, Claire, où est Claire Claire Are you here? Are you here, Claire Non, je suis là. Ah oui I've never seen you clear. I would ask her nicely, or catch your money, motherfucker. You pay sixty dollars, you want your hundred dollars for your cup of water. You know what I'm You know why this guy's not talking? You know why no problem. You don't know, watch the TV, you know what? I'm gonna look at my channel and see LAPD and the FBI. What's my real one host? I look at somebody. If you do it, they come on you.
Kata he is with Israel, from Israel who popular, so they are popular, they are not from Israel, they are Israel man. He said, wow, he went to six, but I didn't have it. Look at the screen, look at the screen, look at the screen. Look at the screen, look at the screen, look at the screen. That's the joke. You know, you know, it will be a little bit of a matter. Before I arrive in the park, the police said I'm not done, and I think I heard it in the park. Because I'm not going to go and go down. I'm not going to go and read it down. No, you have a back to my gun, you know. You can go and go. Go, master. Shall I read it down? Me see it. Go, be. Shall I read it down? Me see it. The family don't go. Let's 
So he know, say, hoi! <laughs> you go ask him, hmm, what style is that? <laughs> and he said, John <laughs> King Jaya. And he said, okay. And then you they start a fight, right? When you fight him, would that be like... Yeah. <laughs> and then you fight him. But you fight him with a nice and it's a soul for me. Play a time. One place up, one place up. 
Cuando te escribes. You know, this is when you find true love. Somebody, if I met you, I don't tell you so You know, girl, I want to do this for you because you know what? Look, 
I saw my clean. Man, see brown out in the brown. Oh, that's sir. See, you don't have any movie. I'm in the sorry. We go It's a pleasure to be here one more year again. And I promise you, next year, next year, we got my friend Stanley the boy. We got my friend Stanley the boy. We are now civilized. We have to. So, they 
brought me to translate. The basket is for a couple. All right, go ahead, pick. Pick a number from the basket. You don't have to turn your head, you got on shades. You can't even see anyone. Annette Graham. Annette, are you there? Annette? Yes, here you are. You have won this lovely basket. DJ, can I get some music while she come get the basket? Give me come get basket music. Check yes, again. Yes, Annette, here you go. And you're here with your husband because I talked to him earlier. So this is good. You two can smell good and chase each other around the house. And keep the relationship going. This is good. There's things for a man heal. We got man foot. We're in there so you can fix his heel now and get those scales off his heel. <laughs> so he can wear his sandals for the summer. Yeah. Yeah. Give a round of applause for Annette for winning the basket. Thank you, Annette. Any other announcements, Raymond? Do I need to make any other announcements? Anybody else we need to acknowledge? Who was the caterer? Who cooked the food? I went what? Island Spice, a clap, a round of applause for Island Spice for preparing the food. The food was very good, the chicken was cooked, I like that, the little vein popped in my mouth, I like that. The chicken was good, the curry meal was excellent. Did everybody have a good time? Yes! Thank you so much for coming out, I hope everybody come home safely. Give them a round for Raymond and Signal Promotions for putting this together. This was an awesome event, everybody dressed up, I liked it, everybody loved it, dinner was good. Let's do this again next year, everybody get home safe, but we're gonna dance for a while, we're not leaving right now, these just take us out. Photographer is in the building, what's up, one more time, take pictures, we all in here, let's have a good time, DJ, it's on you. Ladies and gentlemen,